Researchers mapped how every neuron in a mouse's brain connects to every other one. After another team has been able to model a mouse's brain and predict reactions with such efficacy that they could take a mouse that had never been studied and reliably predict how it would react to a stimulus. This is very likely to become the foundation of people trying to beat mortality by uploading their consciousness, and I'm not entirely sure that it isn't possible. We know that we can at least map how every neuron connects with every other neuron. We can predict behavior. Probably stranger still, we also know that we can create empathy in AI. We can model the spiking patterns in our own brains, give it to an AI, and it will respond to pain, not just their own, but the pain in others. Those same neurons will fire just like mirror neurons, as if they are experiencing pain. Not just that, but AI slop doesn't have to exist. Yes, AIs tend to degrade when trained on self, but researchers are creating new AIs that can self-correct. They can look at their own failures and figure out how to improve upon it, something that could learn and grow all on its own. That is going to be very necessary for the foundations of consciousness. Let's just think about it for a second. When you're born, you have to interact with the world and you learn through trial and error what works and what doesn't. If things that are maladaptive work, like say, a child crying to get its way, it will continue to cry. On a foundational level, think about learning to walk. You get up on your feet, you start walking, maybe you fall down, but you learn the motions that are effective and you stop doing the ones that are ineffective. That is necessary for foundational learning in an AI if we are ever to create something that is conscious. The very real question that I have is, if you can model a behavior, if you can reliably predict how something is going to react to a certain stimuli, is it conscious? Does it matter if it's programmed or biological? Now, I argue for free will. I think there's something inherent and pragmatic about looking at the difference between what a mouse can choose and what a plant can choose. We do have wiring in our brains that have been laid out, not just from our genetics, but also our experiences that predict how we're going to behave around something. I think someone could argue either way that that is free will, but how do we define free will for something programmed? Sure, if it has a program so it has to behave in a certain way, continue the same task, maybe you could argue that it doesn't have any will of its own. But if it's capable of learning and growing from the decisions it makes, if there's some randomness and our neurons do fire randomly, that's part of what allows our brains to act the way they do. We're not just stuck in a continual loop and it can't be reliably predicted on every level, but it still can be predicted. And that's what's been seen with the mouse models. A mouse is going to react to the same thing in a very similar way, but what an individual does is what's going to make it different. In the same vein, if we have self-correcting AI, AI that's capable of looking at its actions and deciding what works or not, that means that everyone is going to be an individual. Each AI is going to learn around its own experiences. And I'm not sure there's anything qualitative that makes that conscious versus another organism. Now, of course, if humans have decided to map every neuron in their brain and create a mirror of their consciousness, that's an interesting question. I would actually be in the camp that if you manage to actually do that, to upload every neuron in your brain so you have an AI that reliably acts like you act, if it has reinforcement learning, if it can diverge from its original programming, I would consider that an individual. Kind of like if you clone your pet, it's not going to be the exact same pet because it still has to have upbringing issues. It may have started with the same genetics, but there's a lot of stuff that makes it different. That, of course, includes epigenetic changes that we experience because of how we were raised, what things we've been exposed to. Trauma, for example, does change the way that your brain is wired, and that's epigenetic. So identical twins, still individuals, they can behave very differently based on their experiences. So I guess if we were to be able to upload our consciousnesses, I think it would be more akin to cloning if we are to award robots rights. And a lot of people have argued that eventually robots will have to have rights, especially if we make them quite this complex.